Hey there everybody, Chris from Orlando here, and today I have a very simple question. Do you want to be a cast member at Disney World? Most people would probably say yes, it seems like a fun job. Mickey Mouse is your boss, Launchpad McQuack drives you to work every day, and the Seven Dwarves would be your landlords. All sunshine and rainbows, right? Well, kinda. See, being a cast member is both not all it's cracked up to be and everything it is cracked up to be. My goal with this channel is to shine a light on the good, the bad, and the f***ing <laughs> stupid of working at this park. But we all have to start somewhere, and that somewhere is the interview process. So allow me to tell you what to expect when applying for Disney. So my memory of when I applied for Disney is a little hazy because I submitted my resume at 1 in the morning on a cold February night, but I do remember that I applied twice. The first time I gave it a try, I got to the questionnaire portion of the process and I answered truthfully. A somewhat true there, an absolutely false there, you know, the works. It got immediately rejected. So after waiting the required 6 months, I tried again. Only this time, I did all the absolutely correct answers, and oh, somewhat, everything was either absolutely true, or absolutely false. That got me a phone interview. Cause I guess it's easier to indoctrinate someone when they're already a robot or something. So I got the typical phone interview questions like, why do you want to work here? What can you bring to the company? Etc, etc. And the phone interview goes well, and they tell me, alright, now that that's done, we need you to come down in two weeks to do an in-person interview. WHAT?! What's the point of having this miracle of technology if you're just gonna drag me down to Florida to do another interview there? Especially when you have people applying from all over the world! Apparently some of my friends just had to do the phone interview, so either they got lucky, or some hiring rep was just wanting to mess with me. I'm lucky I had family down there to crash with and that I got the job in the end, or the 8 hour drive would have been a waste of time. Oh hey, welcome back, did you get the job? No, I just got shanked by a retired alligator, so you know, the typical Florida experience. The casting building where they have the interviews is right across from Disney Springs, so it's pretty easy to find, and it's actually a pretty nice building. Of course the doorknob is the doorknob from Alice in Wonderland, which I thought was a nice touch. What was a bit much, though, is the literal golden idols they have with the Fab Five and Roger Rabbit for some reason in the lobby. Like, Disney, that's a bit on the nose self-promotion even for you. Which reminds me, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content! Okay, I'll stop. So, after waiting probably like an hour for an interviewer to open up, you'll head into their office. So I've only done the interview once before, so I asked around to gather some other stories about the whole ordeal. My first story comes from Paige from Richmond, and uh, it's not fun. She interviewed with Disney twice. The first time she interviewed, she was told her hair, which was a bit long at the time, was an issue. Easy solution, right? Just cut your hair, it only takes like 15 minutes to do. And that's what Paige said she'd do. Heck, my friend Danica from Pensacola, who has bright pink hair, wore a wig whenever she interviewed because of the whole Disney look thing. These were easy fixes, but the interviewer was still humming and hawing over it, and Paige said it'd just really suck if the whole thing that would keep her from working her dream job was her long hair. To which the interviewer replied that she was going to consider it, but then Paige said, sucks, and that was too negative, and now she was going to be denied. Now it's a good thing that Disney has never been associated with a word as bad as sucks. A jackass? And let her taste the fires of hell! What do you call him, Max? Yavos? I could do more, but we need to move on. The next time Paige interviewed, she was told her personality was too spicy. What does that even mean? How white do you have to be in order for someone's personality to be too spicy? Probably more white than Mike Pence fighting a polar bear with a jar of mayonnaise, but I digress. Needless to say, this was heartbreaking for Paige to have been denied over a haircut and an outgoing personality. Maybe that robot metaphor I used earlier was more on the nose than I initially thought. 
Which brings me to a robot that actually did get the job, me. So the guy calls me into his office and we get to talking and he starts asking all the typical interview questions which again leads me to ask, why did I have to drive all the way down to Florida when I could have just done this over the phone again? But the interview was going mediocre at best, I could see him still kind of debating over it. But little did he know, I had an ace up my sleeve. You see, I had contacted a friend of mine about the interview and asked her for advice. And I'm going to tell you what she told me. The big secret to getting the dream job at Disney. Tell the interviewer you are super crazy about safety. Yeah, turns out that, at least on the surface, Disney is super crazy about the safety of its guests and, yeah, sure, the cast members. Like, I know it sounds more like a plus on your resume rather than the thing that will most likely get you the job, but literally as soon as I started talking about how important safety was to me, the guy leaned forward and we got to talking about where I wanted to work. So BOOM! There's your magic word, your metaphorical keys to the kingdom. Now I did mention that he asked me where I wanted to go, and if you're a CP or college program, you're not going to have any say in the matter. You're going where they want you to go. But if you're a regular hire, they ain't trying to get you in the general area of where you want. However, they don't outright ask where you want to go. For attractions, at least they'll ask you, what's your favorite park? I replied, Magic Kingdom. Favorite land there? Uh, Tomorrowland, I guess? Favorite ride? Oh, Space Mountain. And based on those answers, he placed me in Tomorrowland. Stitch's Great Escape, sure, but we all gotta start somewhere. But that's an important lesson for you. If they start asking those questions, they'll try their best to get you in that location, or at least in the same area. But I actually want to recommend having your favorite attraction or restaurant be your main work environment. Why? Because, unfortunately, there will come a point where it'll turn from your favorite ride into your work. It turns into a place you had a really funny on-ride photo with your friends and these fun memories to the place where some Karen yells at you because they're five hours early for their fast pass. It kind of sucks when it happens. So here's what I recommend instead. Let's say you have your heart set at working at Space Mountain. It's your favorite ride and you really want to work there. When you get asked what's your favorite ride, say another ride in the area like Buzz or the People Mover. They'll still put you in the area, and this will open up the opportunity to cross-train there later. You can later get trained at Space Mountain, which will allow you to get the occasional shift there, but it'll still be an event. It'll still be your favorite magical attraction, because you're not spending every day there. I know this sounds cynical, but in the long run, sure, you'll be building up some good memories from working there, but there'll also be a lot of bad memories with that too. You shouldn't have bad memories with your favorite ride. I'm rambling too much about this, but I feel like it's important to keep that magic alive. I'll probably make another video going into more detail about that another time. So in summary for your interview, be a robot for the robots, be prepared for a sudden vacation, and try to turn down the spice for the 20 minutes it takes to do the interview. Disney is notorious about being strict over who they hire, and hey, if I was able to get a job with them, you'll be fine as long as you're chill. Although this was before I became cynical about everything. I'm Chris from Orlando, and whoa, 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 hang on there, Chris. That's all well and good if you want to work a normal job with Disney, but that is not what I want to do. I want to be a performer. I want to be a princess and dance down Main Street in the parade. How do I do that? Well, my overeager friend who sounds just like me, I'm glad you asked. Auditioning for Disney is a lot different than going in for an interview, but that's something we'll cover next week. Yeah, surprise! This is a two-parter. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe so you can be here when that video comes out. A special thanks to Danica from Pensacola and Paige from Richmond for contributing their stories. I'm Chris from Orlando, and Disney might make your dreams come true, but I can show you how to manipulate the system. Take care, y'all. One love. Don't hurt nobody.